I'm Laura Ingram, and this is The Ingram Angle from Washington Tonight. Trial by error. That's the focus of tonight's angle. And they might be asking, why is public trust in the American judicial system declining? Well, it's not simply the BLM propaganda flooding our schools, our universities, that's told young people that disproportionate incarceration of African Americans equals racism. It's not just that. Respect for our justice system is also cratering due to Democrats' crusade, both against Trump and against traditional Americans in general. Now, for the most egregious example, look no further than Trump's civil trial in New York, brought by Trump-hating activist Letitia James. Now, yesterday, Judge Arthur Engeron, who looks like any random legal panelist on MSNBC, blatantly revealed his anti-Trump bias for the world to see because he went so far as to mock Trump's phrase about the perfect phone call, even using air quotes as he said it. Now, a conversation with the president. Let me just get this right. A conversation that the president had with Zelensky is somehow fair game for a fraud trial that deals with actions years ago. Look, I saw this and I thought, look, nobody will be surprised by this. This guy's a lefty going back to his days as an anti-Vietnam War protester. We all know what's going on here. No case like this has ever been brought in New York, overvaluing assets, and they're bringing it now only to try to break Trump financially. And we know if Trump never ran for president, they never would have targeted him, never would have happened. That's undeniable. And it's prima facie evidence of the rank political vendetta at work here. Now, the media has made it very clear to any Democrat in the DOJ or the DA's offices around the country that their job is to prosecute Joe Biden's political opponents by any means necessary. They don't want equal application of the law. That's why there are no cries for prosecuting those pro-Hamas nutbags who damaged White House property and historic monuments last weekend. Now, imagine if it had been conservative protesters who tried to scale the White House fence or who splattered paint on the gates. Think of the resources that would have been devoted to arresting every last suspect. Well, we already have a pretty good idea, don't we, of how they handle protests that they don't approve of? They do things like carry out early morning raids on the homes of elderly January 6th suspects who committed no acts of violence. And 6 o'clock in the morning, I hear a boom, 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 boom. FBI, open the door. Open the door. We'll knock it down. Yeah. And one was pointing an assault rifle at my head about four feet away. And I said, please step outside. I stepped outside. They handcuffed me. I said, what is this about? And they said, search warrant. They never produced one. They never showed it. 9 o'clock in the morning, I am on my bed doing my emails, which I usually do. I can hear some ruckus going on in the other room, the carrier. So I get up, come around the corner, and I hear somebody barking, hands up, FBI. They proceeded to handcuff me, gave me no reasons why. Of course, no search warrant. God forbid they present a search warrant. And they, they also launched a massive made-for-TV manhunt. This happens almost two years after January 6th. The FBI says they arrested a January 6th defendant after a major police manhunt. Yeah, that's right. He was a New Jersey National Guard member who was charged with felonies in connection with the January 6th attack. He was there at the Capitol. Gregory Yetman is his name. When the FBI went to arrest him, he fled, and there was a massive manhunt in New Jersey. How many times can they say massive manhunt? Okay, this week, just to give you a sense of the resources spent, federal, state, and local law enforcement yeah, huge resources were used in this attempt to arrest this former New Jersey National Guardsman who'd been uh, wanted for allegedly picking up a can of pepper spray and using it against Capitol Police and other protesters. So this guy, Gregory Yetman, who's 46 years of age, turned himself in without incident. But the FBI made its point, didn't it? And by the way, this was all done to arrest an individual who the local mayor said was no threat to the community. Which begs the question. Why did they need to deploy SWAT teams, police canines, call in the helicopters, roadblocks, all that? Why did they need to do that? Well, many Americans get it, right? They see it for what it is. This is a two-tiered system of justice. Arresting this guy with such a big display of force is a message to all of you. Not worth attending a rally, any kind of rally. Now, was it in any way proportional 
that the head of the Proud Boys, who wasn't even at the Capitol on January 6th, was handed a sentence of 22 years in federal prison? The prosecutor said that the sentence was meant to deter others who were, quote, unhappy with the results of future elections. Huh. Well, how many fentanyl drug dealers whose pills have killed people get that kind of sentence? Just last month, the dealer linked to the deadly pills sold to actor Michael K. Williams, he got a measly five years in federal prison. Five years for selling a deadly drug that killed a man. So we have gang members, we got drug dealers, rapists, child molesters, murderers, and perhaps even terrorists who've crossed our southern border. And yet the Biden administration, they don't seem to, say, seem to care about that. There's 280-something people on the terrorist watch list. Are they out of the country or are they in the country? Senator, they very well may be out of the country. But you they don't know. But they know where those January 6th people are. I mean, they just don't care about the border crossers because that narrative is bad for them politically. Yet not so with the January 6th cases because they're key to Biden's campaign. Thus, the DOJ is still expending massive resources on those cases. We've seen about 1,200 cases thus far, but 1,000 other people have been identified. And on top of that, you got 1,000 others who are unidentified yet who could face charges. And the statute of limitations expires in early 2026. <laughs> Look, as long as the Democrats think that this helps them politically, they're going to keep the charade going. When true threats to society run free. This simply makes us trust them less, though, if that's possible at this point. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.